Oh, good evening, everyone. Good to see you out tonight. We're going to get started here. Song number 290, if you would stand with me. Glad we could be in the house of the Lord this evening. Song 290, a new name written down in glory. How many of you remember that day your name was added, added to the roll? Amen. Good to think about that tonight. Let's think of it as we sing. Song 290, a new name written down in glory, all together there on the first. I was once a sinner, but I came, pardoned to receive from my Lord. This was freely given, and I found that He always kept His word. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine, and the white robe. In the story, a sinner has come home, for there's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine, with my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never more to roam. I was humbly kneeling at the God's angry frown when the heavens open and I saw that my name was written now there's a new name written out in glory and it's mine oh yes it's mine and the white robed angels sing the story a sinner if you would, ask God's blessing on the service this evening. Brother Father, we come to you tonight with joy in our hearts for the opportunity to come into your house of worship. Thanks for this mid midweek service, Lord. We all gather together and take with us to you and listen to your word. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy and all your answered prayers in our lives. And we ask you to use our pastor tonight as you bring the message, Lord, to fill his heart with, with your word and seated. Well, good Wednesday, chilly evening tonight, and uh, glad that we could be here. Tell you, on these kind of days, when uh, when uh, you have the possibility or threat of snow or that type of thing, <clears throat> or especially ice, uh, it always makes you pray and ask the Lord, Lord, make it clear so we know what to do. <clears throat> and so uh, he did. 
today to uh, allow us to know that we didn't need to cancel uh, tonight. I don't know if you remember about 10 or 12 years ago, we uh, met on, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, on a Wednesday night. It was just raining, wasn't uh, supposed to change over till later, and we left and <laughs> stepped out on the sidewalk and you're we like, whoa, we should have brought our ice skates. And uh, <clears throat> before we left that night, there was about three or four cars all piled up on top of each other on the bridge out here. And I was praying, Lord, don't let that be tonight, please. <laughs> that would be uh, not good. So anyways, thank the Lord. We are here tonight and uh, we, we are very glad of that. Okay, we don't have a prayer letter this evening, but we do have a prayer list. And if you did not receive a prayer list uh, already this evening, would you raise your hand so we can get that to you? Anyone that did not get a prayer list? <clears throat> okay, I don't see any hands. Thank you, gentlemen. I think we got it covered. You all do. I didn't do anything. Thank you for that. Right, let's have a word of prayer. And uh, we'll pray for the <clears throat> offerings that have been received. And uh, as we do, Brother Rick Jackson, would you pray for the offering, please? Amen. All right, brother. If you would stand with me once again, Psalm number 306. Psalm 306, only a sinner saved by grace. We'll sing the first, second, and last verses this evening. Not have I gotten but what I receive. Grace hath bestowed it since I had believed. Boasting excluded, pride I abase, I'm only a sinner, saved by grace, only a sinner, saved by grace, only a sinner, saved by grace, this is my story, to God be the glory, I'm only a sinner, saved by grace. And sin ruled my heart, causing my footsteps from God to depart. Jesus had found me, happy my case. I now am a sinner, saved by grace. Only a sinner, saved by grace. Only a sinner, saved by grace. This is my story. Saved by grace, suffer a sinner whose heart overflows, loving his Savior to tell what he knows, once more to tell it. Song 309, Song 309, truth in this song, without him, I can do nothing, right. <clears throat> Song 309. Without him I would be 
enjoy singing that song. Without him, I would be nothing. Oh, what's the truth to that, isn't it? Definitely so. Second Timothy chapter number two. Second Timothy chapter number two. <clears throat> Actually, Second Timothy chapter one. We'll we'll read from there. All right, let's stand together, if you will. Second Timothy chapter number one. Begin reading in verse number 13. We haven't been back in uh, as far as a complete, a complete message on this passage since uh, the first message for the series. <clears throat> so we're going to revisit that this evening and uh, make some, uh, some uh, observations here from this passage again. Verse number 13 of first Timothy, or 2 Timothy <clears throat> chapter number 1. It says, hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are uh, Phagellus and Hermogenes. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus, for he oft refreshed me, and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently, and found me. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy on the Lord in that day. And in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, <clears throat> thou knowest very well. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and that the Lord, or, and the Lord, uh, give thee understanding in all things. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you once again for your word this evening. We're so blessed to be able to go to your word anytime we so desire. <clears throat> Lord, we could be uh, in the night, maybe tossing or turning or unable to find rest and we can open your word we can go to it for peace and comfort we can go to it for reassurance <clears throat> we can go to it for many many facts and truths and principles and we can do that any time of the day and we are so thankful that you have not left us uh, without it that we have a, a book in which is perfect and from you, and that we can hold it, we can read it, and we can uh, model our life after it. And that it is a, it's an instruction book on how to live. And so we thank you for it tonight. And we ask that you would bless your word in our hearts tonight. Thank you for those that are able to be here tonight. I pray that it would not be in vain that they would draw closer to you as a result of being here this evening. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Others for Christ as is our our theme for the year and and as we have been looking at 
Others for Christ in uh, these past uh, several Wednesdays, uh, then I want us to, uh, to consider once again uh, others for Christ and with this, this thought in mind uh, that we are soldiers of Christ. We are soldiers for Christ as we go out and we, we uh, focus on <clears throat> others for Christ. We must understand and realize that we are soldiers for him. <clears throat> I enjoy singing Onward Christian Soldiers uh, and even singing it with uh, when we say the pledge to the Christian flag and then sing Onward Christian Soldiers. And, and that has been a, a favorite hymn of mine. For a lot of years, since I was, well, since I was a kid, uh, it has been one of my favorite uh, hymns. And I know that we don't, uh, and none of us have had to uh, march to war as far as physically battling for the faith and, and contending with those who would want to uh, imprison us or or harm us in any ways, at least I'm not aware of anyone in here tonight that's had to physically do battle with, uh, with uh, a, a force or a, a government or something to that nature <clears throat> to uh, uh, physically put up a, a battle against them as a soldier. But you know, we are still soldiers of the Lord. We're in his army. We are, uh, we go out in, uh, in uh, his name and we, we uh, are uh, uh, enlisted at salvation. Mm -hmm. Amen. We are, every one of us. Mm -hmm. right. It is, uh, <clears throat> sort of reminds me of, uh, of uh, the uh, army in Israel. They, they enlist uh, as soon as you graduate, or at least this is just the way it, the way it used to be. Uh, you graduate high school and you, you are enlisted in the uh, army of Israel for, uh, I think, four years. I'm not sure, maybe more, I don't know. But you're enlisted in there and everybody, boy, girl, it doesn't matter. You're enlisted uh, for your term of service. And uh, that, is, that is your call as a citizen of the nation of Israel. You know, to be citizens of heaven, when we accept Christ as our Savior, we are enlisted into being this, a soldier in the army of Jesus Christ. And we are his soldiers. And I, I tell you what, I, I never, I uh, always enjoy on the different times that we recognize veterans in our in our congregation and I have a, an utmost respect for veterans <clears throat> and I, I never served in the uh, in the military in that uh, form I've got family members that uh, that have and, and are presently uh, doing that but I, I never had that privilege but you know every day I wake up I have the privilege of being a uh, soldier mm -hmm. in the Lord's army. Mm -hmm. And it is, it is similar to uh, Israel's army. It's boys and girls alike. Mm -hmm. All of us, right. all of us are in the Lord's army. <clears throat> and this evening, I, I want us to, to have a, a focus. There is a, uh, a focus uh, given by Paul as he's writing Timothy here. Uh, about uh, the others for Christ and teaching others uh, also the faithful men. And we always have to remember the instructions for a soldier come from the top. I don't see too many uh, privates going into the, uh, the uh, commanding officer's uh, office and say, hey, you need to snap too. That wouldn't work, would it, Brother Cecil? No, not unless you want to snap two in the uh, in the brig. That's not going to happen. the uh, The private doesn't go in and start barking off orders and saying, "You know what? Today, I would like for you to uh, clean up the parade ground." That's not going to happen. That doesn't happen. And you know, 
what Paul is telling Timothy here as his son in the ministry is the instructions that Paul has given and, and is in the process of given, giving to Timothy. These are instructions, they're principles that have been passed down from headquarters. Have they not? Because where did Paul get his instructions, these truths that he's passing on? From the Lord, didn't he? Right. He received them from the Lord, and he in turn is passing them on to his son in the ministry or to, to the one in which he is training and he is preparing for battle as a soldier of Jesus Christ. He is passing them on to, uh, to him <clears throat> And even as a, uh, if you want to look at it this way, as Paul would be a, would be a, uh, uh, in the chain of command, uh, Paul would be over uh, uh, Timothy, although we don't necessarily exactly look at it in that way, but he is his mentor. He is the one that is training him and telling him, how the ropes are, are done and how things are taken care of. And he's passing these truths on to, uh, on to Timothy. And in this process of relaying these truths of Scripture <clears throat> to, uh, to Timothy, he tells him there, as we just read in verse number 13, he says, hold fast, hold fast this, uh, this information that I'm giving you, these sound words that I'm giving you, not because they're my teachings, not because they're my principles, not because they're my orders, but because I have received them of Jesus Christ. You've heard them of me. I've, I heard them from the Lord, and now I am passing them on uh, uh, to you. And you are to take them and then pass them down, as we see in verse number two, pass them down to, uh, to the next uh, generation of, of uh, believers, the next ones that will be enlisted into the Lord's army, the next ones that are to come out uh, uh, on the, uh, the scene as, uh, as Christians, they need to know what the marching orders from Jesus Christ are. It's always confusing to me on a national level of... <clears throat> One administration comes in and changes the previous administration's policies towards the world when they were working. And that always makes me scratch my head. They're, um, they don't make any sense. Why would you change a policy that is, that is working? Why would you change the whole scheme of things? You know, with the Lord, we don't have to worry about that. Right. He gives his principles, he gives his commands, he gives his truths of scripture, and he has given it to the men of God down through the years so that they can what? Pass it on to the next generation of soldiers, pass it on to the next group of men and, and ladies that will serve the Lord so that they can stand firm and they can hold these <clears throat> These sound words, they can hold them as true, as rock solid, as a foundation from which to go from. It's not any fun. I don't know if you've ever, if you've ever uh, stood out uh, on the beach at the ocean or whatever. And, and uh, you're standing there and you're standing there close enough for the waves to come in and pass by and then go back out and back and forth. And have you ever been standing there? And the, the waves are doing that. And before you know it, maybe one of, your, one of your feet has slid off to the side because the sand has been pulled away from your foot in that area. And so you got a firm foot on this one and this one, nothing to stand on. Principles and truths that, that uh, change or, or words of man that change they don't give you anything to stand on. It's like that sand. When the waves come in and it washes around them and pulls it away from you, it leaves you with a, a sorry excuse for a foundation. But I can promise you right here and tell you tonight, this 
does not change. Amen. And so when, when God gave it to the, the writers of Scripture and as he gave it to Paul uh, here for him to hold on to and Paul takes it and gives it to Timothy, Timothy can stand on it as a sure foundation, as marching orders, as a soldier of the Lord for, for his work of the ministry. And he can stand firm on it and he can stand there and say, listen, this is what God says. It's what he's always said. And it's what he's always going to say because he doesn't change. He stands firm. He can stand solid upon this, tr these truths. Pass it on, he says, to faithful men. But look in verse number three of chapter two. It says, thou therefore, <clears throat> he, has, he has told him, now listen, be strong, there at the, in the verse number one, he tells him, be strong, and the grace that is in Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus, then I, I want you to, to uh, take these truths and pass them on to faithful men uh, and teach them these same truths so that they can be also soldiers of the Lord. And then he says in verse number three, thou therefore <clears throat> with these thoughts that I've just mentioned to you, Paul, that I've just told you about, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. How many of us enjoy hardness? <laughs> I, I'm not even going to raise my hand. No way. But I don't know of anyone that, that prays uh, to the Lord and says, Lord, you know what? This has been too easy. If you don't mind, I would like to undergo some hardship. I could, le I could leave a sign-up sheet in the foyer all this year, and I doubt that it would have one name on it December 31st that says, yes, you know what? I, I have had it too easy. I, I would like to undergo some hardship. Why? Because life usually has hardship that comes along. We don't ever have to ask for it. And here, here Paul is saying, now, Timothy, endure this hardship, this hardness. You're, you're going to suffer trouble. You're going to be afflicted. That's going to come, but in, endure it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, suffer through it. May I allow it to make you stronger. What's that saying? If it doesn't make you bitter, it'll make you better. I tell you what, I've had some hardship or hardness in my life, but that you would be tempted to be bitter. Anyone have those kind of things? Sure we have. Every one of us have had those, those type of instances that, that come about in our, in our life that uh, in the course of living, that would be considered hardness that could make us bitter. But that's not the Lord's plan. Things that come into our life should make us more like Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so Paul says, endure this. You're going to have to, to deal with this. I, I, I want you to, I encourage you, I exhort you to endure it. Allow it to make you, to be, uh, uh, allow it to make you better. Because he says, as a what? Good soldier. As a good soldier, he says here, and I, I looked at that and at the at the term good. Good soldier. No, Brother Rick, I'm sorry, do they call Marines soldiers or just Marines? Marines, uh, that's what I thought. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, we'll skip the Marines. No. I'm sure that every one of uh, you all that have served in the military in whatever branch, you've served with some guys that you would say, yeah, now they were a good serviceman. And then you've, were, you've served with some others that you said, don't, be put, don't put me anywhere near that fellow. I don't want anything to do with them. When my life's on the line, I don't want to be standing beside him. There's a difference. But Paul says, Timothy, you allow this hardness, this this." hardship that is going to come 
endure it as a good soldier. And I looked at the word good here, and, and this is the different uh, definitions that it gave this word good. It's honest. I want an honest soldier. I want an honest individual that will serve beside me. He says an honest one, worthy, valuable, virtuous. Those are some good traits in a soldier, aren't they? Valuable and honest and worthy. Endure this hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. As a warrior for the Lord. There's no, as much as I love my country. Even, even in the condition our country is in, is in now. And it's, it's faltering in my opinion. But even at that, I love my country better than any country in this world. But that being said, I'm sure glad that I can be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I respect and I, I look up to the soldiers of the United States of America. But you know, every one of us as believers is a soldier of Jesus Christ. Will we be a good one? That's the question. Will we be worthy of that title? Will we be an honest soldier? Will we be a valuable soldier? Or will we be the one that no one <laughs> wants on their team? Who wants this fellow in your squad to get the job done? Not me. I don't want that to be me. I want to be valuable. I want to be one that can be dependable and dependent upon in, in a time of need or a time of, of trouble. I want to be a good soldier. He says, endure hardness, these troublesome times. Endure them as a, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. But look what a good soldier is there in verse number four. A good soldier says, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. There, there's not a, a, a good soldier that when he goes into that campaign of war, when he goes into uh, that and he's warreth, uh, he's warring or he's, he is uh, in the battle. When he's in the midst of that, you don't want him to have his mind on a million other things. You don't want him to have his mind on everything else except what he's doing. It says, um, uh, no man that warreth, that is a warrior, and goes into battle, <clears throat> uh, entangleth himself in the affairs of this life. To be bound or entwined. In my, in my mind, I have this picture when I, when I read that and, and think of... of uh, uh, an illustration of this. It's like fighting with one arm tied behind your back and blindfolded. I'm not a good fighter to begin with, but I'm really not any good if I can't see what I'm supposed to be hitting and I've only got one arm. Especially what if they tie your good, your, your prominent arm behind you and you're fighting opposite hand. That wouldn't be any good, would it? Where I'm bound up. And I'm handicapped. Which kind of soldier would you want on your side? One that is focused on the enemy. One that has both hands to, uh, uh, in which to, uh, to do battle. Sure, that's, that's the kind of soldier I would want. And he says, Timothy, understand. To be a good soldier, endure this hardness <clears throat> as a good soldier. And don't go into battle. Don't fight this spiritual battle that you're in, entangled and entwined in the affairs of this life. Say, so, well, Brother Brian, you, are you talking about we shouldn't care for anything uh, in our life? We shouldn't care for our family. We shouldn't care for our job. We shouldn't care if our bills are paid. We shouldn't care or just throw it to the wind. No, that's not what I'm saying. 
what Paul is saying here when he's saying don't be entangled, don't be in, ensnared uh, in this. He's saying, listen, as a soldier of Jesus Christ, your focus shouldn't be on this temporary stuff. Your focus should be as a soldier of Jesus Christ on that that is eternal. What has he already told him? He's been telling him in chapter one and, and uh, here he's been talking to him and reminding him, listen, one of the very first truths I gave you or that you, that you have as, a, as an individual is the truth of salvation, the gospel. And what's that got to do with eternity? You're dealing with, he's, he will instruct and, and he is reminding Timothy, you are going to pass this on to faithful men. You are concerned about the souls of others, so you need to tell them about the gospel. But you're also concerned about their, their life, their everyday living, that and what they do here in uh, this present world also affects things in the future. Because he's going to tell him, listen, when when we when we run, and I'm I'm getting ahead of myself here, but he's saying when we run, we aren't we aren't striving for a corruptible crown. What we're striving for and what we're serving for is an incorruptible crown. What we're striving for is something that is not of this world, it's the next. And so Paul's telling him, listen, Timothy. Don't be a soldier that is so enamored and so focused on the world that is temporary that you're no good to the Lord and his army for eternal things. And so he, he tells him, don't allow these things to, to ensnare you, to entangle you in, the, uh, in this life. Why? So that he... Timothy, Paul, the soldier of Jesus Christ, so that he may please him. And who is him? Jesus Christ. So that he, the soldier, may please Jesus Christ, his commander, who hath chosen him to be a what? Soldier. And the Lord doesn't choose us to be a soldier, to be a bad soldier. He doesn't, she doesn't desire for us to, to be a bad soldier or a soldier that is, that is focused on, uh, more focused on the things that are around us and distracted by, distracted by all the things that, that are around us on a daily basis. He doesn't want us to be distracted by those things. You know, you can get in trouble for distracted driving, can't you? <clears throat> I want you to text and drive. Why? Why don't we text and drive? Why should we not text and drive? Because it's distracting. That car coming at you at 55 and you travel, driving towards him or whatever speed it, it might be. When you, are, when you are coming together, I don't want that person distracted. I want him staying on his side of the road. I was talking to Miss Kim today about a fellow that was that was uh, traveling. That he was all over the road, wasn't he, Miss Kim? All over the road. I was thankful she was behind him, not <laughs> in front of him. You don't want distracted driving. You don't want distracted soldiers, and the Lord doesn't want distracted spiritual soldiers. You can't be a good soldier and be distracted. By the things of this world. And he says, don't be entangled by this. <clears throat> Why? So that you can please Jesus Christ, the one who has called you into this ministry. <clears throat> so he says, stay focused. If you look at verse number five, he also says, I want you to be disciplined. I want you to be disciplined. He says, and if a man also strive for masteries, in other words, he is, he is contending here. He says, if he strives for masteries, yet he is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. 
And here he is going into the thought and the, uh, the analogy of uh, this striving or this contending. And even in, in Corinthians, here in just a, a second, we'll see he even relates it to the, uh, the ones that would contend or would strive for the, uh, the Olympics at that time, as you, if you will. To, uh, to strive for a corruptible crown, to, to strive for uh, and, and, and put under, uh, to put their bodies under discipline and under self-discipline. And so that they can perform their duties better. If you, uh, if you look at uh, an individual that is training for, uh, for the Olympics or that type of uh, activity. If you look at them, and, and even I enjoy watching uh, some of the documentaries that they do sometimes during the Olympics of, here is a, here's a day in the life of this individual. And some of the dedication and the discipline that these individuals have to have in their life to where to where for four and eight and 12 years, sometimes they will willingly, they will choose to put their body under submission so that they will not go and have a bowl of ice cream in the evening. <laughs> what? Just for the possibility of wearing a gold medallion around your neck, just, just the possibility. They're not guaranteed it. For a gold medallion, you won't cheat and have one bowl of ice cream? No, why? Because they're striving for the mastery. They're striving to contend for, a, for a, 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 an award in which they know that it takes dedication. I am, I am amazed at that type of dedication that these people will get up at four o'clock in the morning and not go to bed until late in the evening and, and just work out every day uh, of their life for that many years to wear that medallion. That's a lot of dedication. That's a lot of self-discipline. I won't have you raise your hand, but how many of you know that you should not eat? I'll close my eyes. How many of you know? How many of you know you should not eat a particular item, but you eat it anyways? <laughs> or you know you're not supposed to uh, drink a certain item because it has too much caffeine in it. But you drink it anyways. Sure. Why? Because self-discipline is easy. Yeah, right. It's hard. It's hard. I like Brother Joe's story about uh, uh, having to get rid of his Snickers. Personally, I didn't like that story because he used to share his Snickers with me before he had to get rid of them all. Just plain and simple, it's a difficult task. We're talking about eating, and we haven't even touched exercise. <laughs> yeah, I can tell by the groans in the auditorium. That's not a favorite self-discipline, is it? No. But you know, spiritually, we have to be self-disciplined. Right. Spiritually, we have to be self-disciplined. Why? So we can be a good soldier. Amen. So we can be worthy. So we can be valuable. So I can raise my hand and say, look how valuable I am. No. The Lord's the one that recognizes your value. But to be a good soldier, you've got to be self-disciplined. Well, how do you, how are you self-disciplined? We better be spending time in his word. To be a good soldier. 
Tell you what, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give you, I wouldn't give you uh, uh, 10 cents for somebody that's going to be on the front line with me that never practices their shooting. I wouldn't give you, I wouldn't give you 10 cents for somebody to be on the front line with me who doesn't, who doesn't drill and rehearse the different methods of operation that are needed to be a good soldier in a real battle. I wouldn't give you 10 cents for them. In our spiritual life, as spiritual soldiers of the Lord, as we are, as we are given the task of reaching others for Christ, as we're given the task of teaching and training others the truths of God's word, and passing it on to uh, to that next generation who will pass it on to the next. We need to know. We need to be disciplined and be in the word of God so that we know what the truth is. We have our sure foundation and we have to know what we're going to do or what we're the way in which we are to think and act from his word as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. We have to be disciplined in our Bible reading and our Bible study. We have to be re we have to be uh, disciplined in our uh, our communication with our heavenly Father through prayer. Any of you ever find it hard to pray? Sure. Any of you pray and and get halfway through your prayer or somewhere in your prayer because you don't remember where you were in your prayer because you fell asleep. You ever fall asleep while you're praying? I am. It's a hard, it's a hard discipline to really pray. We, we have our prayer list. It's a, it's a hard discipline to pray for those in our prayer list. It's a hard discipline to pray for those in our Sunday school class, when we're writing down the names, it's a hard discipline to pray for the names and to uphold them before the Lord. It's a hard discipline. You know what else is a hard discipline that a good soldier should do? Be here. It is. Hey, Brother Brian, I, it's Wednesday. I'm here. You're preaching to me. Sometimes it is easy to not come, though, isn't it? Sure it is. Whether you shake your head yes or no, it is. It is. I missed one time. I won't go into the long story about it because I've told you before. I missed one Wednesday night when I lived in Missouri because I let my flesh get the better of me. And when I sat down to, to uh, take off my boots from being at the window and door factory. I had all kinds of excuses. Lord, I just, I got off late. Church started at seven. I didn't get off work till 7.15. And now I'm sitting here and I'm tired. You know I'm tired. You know my body. And I didn't go to church. Hmm. I wasn't a good soldier. I wasn't a good husband. She was already at church. But not her lazy, no good for nothing husband. No, I was at home. Sitting, I've still got the, I've still got the blue rocking chair at my house now. Had that thing for a long time. I told Katie the other day, I've got t-shirts older than you are. <laughs> I don't think about that time of being a bad soldier. I don't think about that every time I see that rocking chair. When I see that, that blue rocker, you know what I think of? Rocking our kids. Thank the Lord I have good memories. But I don't have to think back too far. And I remember, you know what? There was a night I was a bad soldier. 
I wasn't valuable. I wasn't self-disciplined. And I sat in that rocker to the comfort of my body, but to the detriment of my spiritual growth. We have to stay on our guard. We, we can't take it for granted that I'm just always going to be a strong soldier for the Lord. We can't say that. It takes work. Mm -hmm. It takes discipline. And Paul is telling Timothy here, listen, you're going you're gonna to look for faithful men so that you can pass these truths on to them. But in this process of you finding faithful men, you're going to have to endure some hardships. But you're going to have to do it as a good soldier. You're going to have to be a, a faithful person yourself. You're going to have to be one that isn't distracted by the things around you that can make you not no longer a good soldier. You're going to have to be a good soldier and be one that is focused on the task that the Lord has given you. You're going to have to be one that is self-disciplined and to, to follow and heed his uh, command. And as you strive for the masteries, as you, as you contend for this day in and day out, as you do this, you're, going, you're, you're desiring an incorruptible crown. But he says, listen, in verse number five, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. What's that mean? You don't run red lights? No. It means you strive and you contend and you go to war and you go to battle and you're a good soldier by following the principles and the truths that God has given of what he expects out of his soldiers. If I ask you all the same question I had asked myself in preparing this message. Am I a good soldier? Am I a good soldier? Am I, am I enduring hardness as a good soldier? Am I ignoring the things that would entangle me? Am I more focused on the temporary than I am the eternal? Am I uh, uh, striving and pressing forward and, and uh, uh, moving forward in self-discipline? Am I doing that? in the different areas of my life and my relationship with God. If I'm not, I need to be because our desire should be to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Why? Because our task demands it. Because our task is given to us by our Savior. Others for Christ. Let's bow our heads together. When you think of your service for the Lord, <clears throat> it's something that you have to answer personally because no one else knows your status as a soldier. Well, they, they might see you serve the Lord in different ways and, and their opinion <clears throat> towards you or about you might be, yes, I would say that they are a good soldier. <clears throat> but really, the Lord is the only one who truly knows. And he can see our hearts and he knows our motives and our reasons in which we serve 
He's the only one that really knows our relationship, the time that we spend in our relationship with our Heavenly Father. Or He disciplined in what goes into our, our eyes. We have a, a gate on those, a guard on those where we are self-disciplined in what we, what we see, what we view, what we read. We have a guard on our ears so that we don't put anything in our minds by way of our ears that would hinder us spiritually. Are we self-disciplined in that? Are we self-disciplined in our minds and our tongue? Many areas in which to consider. I pray that this evening you will allow the Lord to take his word, speak to you, show you what your status as a soldier of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to serve you. Thank you for allowing us to be enlisted into your spiritual army. We know that we face an enemy in Satan and in the worldly thinking that is around us. Lord, I pray that you would help us as we do battle in the spiritual side of life, that you would help us to be strong, to be a valuable and good soldier for you. Lord, I pray that you will take your invitation and that, Lord, we will respond the way you so desire. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together, if you will, as we sing. Brother Andrew leads us in song of invitation. If the Lord's dealing with you, I encourage you to come and talk to him. I can hear my Savior calling. for that. I need him with me everywhere I go. And, uh, all right. Well, let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. And thank you, Lord. It's the closing course. All right. Thank you, Lord.
for saving my soul. <clears throat> Be careful on the way home tonight. Uh, they uh, say that it's supposed to get slick <clears throat> later, but doesn't mean that it couldn't be slick somewhere along the way. So y'all uh, be careful. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see some of you Friday night. Others will see Lord willing on uh, Sunday. So, all right, Brother Joe, you're gone this Sunday too, right? <clears throat> Next two. All right, that's what I thought. But uh, you weather permitting. weather permitting. That's right. Yeah, because I know that you're you're going the direction that all the stuff is uh, at presently. So. Would you dismiss us in prayer, please? Father, we come to you tonight, and Lord, we thank you for, Lord, your mercy, your love, your goodness to us. Lord, you do help us to, Lord, ever be mindful of being a good soldier for you, Lord. Lord, we know we're in a battle. Lord, the Christian life, and Lord, even right now, and uh, things that's about us and around us, Lord, we need to be lifting up your banner. Yes, Lord. And, Lord, uh, serving you in such a way that, Lord, number one, will please you, but at the same time, others will see how much we love you yes. and desire to serve you. So, bless, give us all safety as we go our separate ways. And, Lord, we pray you bless this coming Sunday. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> Join me in the chorus of Thank You, Lord.